What is going on guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are finally going to be doing another class guide, this time focusing on the heavy class. So almost a year ago now I made some class guides for the regular classes in Battlefront 2 and obviously in the last year there have been some drastic changes to not only the regular classes but also just the game in general. And so with so many new or returning players coming to play Battlefront 2 I thought it was about time we went through all the classes again. Now before we get started you can see on screen what we're going to be going through in this video. So first off I'll touch on their base abilities before moving on to their weapons and the stats for each blaster as well as quickly touch on the mods for each weapon. Then we'll move on to four different star card combinations or builds as most people call it including a tank build, an objective build, a battle point build and my own personal cards as well. And then lastly we will just go through some general tips for the heavy class as well. So hopefully all the stuff you saw on screen is what you guys are looking for in a class guide and if it is then make sure to smash that like button if you do end up enjoying the video and make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you are new to the channel. So with all of that out of the way, we are going to get stuck right into it and first off, I do have to mention their regular health pool. So they start off with a base HP of 200, which is actually the highest of all the regular classes in the game, compared to obviously 150 for all other three classes. So even though it's not much different, it definitely can go a long way. Now, yeah, as for their abilities, their L1 ability is the Impact Grenade, which exactly as the name suggests, will detonate on impact with any surface, and without any cards equipped, it will deal roughly 120 to 150 damage to an enemy, depending on how close it is when it explodes. Everyone knows how to use a grenade, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but just make the most of the fact that these do explode on impact by throwing them right at the feet of your enemy if they're hiding around a corner or something like that. The star cards that are available for the L1 ability are an improved version of the Impact Grenade, the detonite charge or the ion torpedo so if you choose any of these cards it will replace the regular l1 ability moving on to their l1 r1 ability and this one is the sentry ability which causes you to pull out a gatling gun style blast which obviously packs some very serious firepower not only that but it does actually create a perimeter around you in which you and any teammates that are in that area will receive reduced explosive damage the star cards that are available for the L1 R1 ability are all variants of this sentry mode and these are the mobile sentry, the supercharged sentry and the explosive sentry. Now the mobile sentry allows for a lot more mobility meaning you can actually pretty much walk twice as fast as you can with the other sentries and it also doesn't deplete if you aren't firing it. The supercharged sentry adds a slight explosive shot to the regular sentry but in turn it does run out a lot faster than normal. Finally the explosive sentry shoots like a rocket launcher in a way dealing the most damage but using the slowest rate of fire of all the sentry modes. Now as for the R1 ability, this one is the combat shield which allows you to deploy a shield in front of you which offers some protection while still being able to fire at your enemies and walk around. The star cards that are available for the R1 ability are the improved combat shield, the barrage ability and the ion turret so these cards will replace that regular combat shield. So that's actually it for all of the abilities and the star cards that go hand in hand with those abilities. Now we're going to move on to the heavy classes weapons and break down some of their stats. So first up we have their base blaster which actually changes depending on which faction you're playing and this is just your stock standard blaster so it has pretty even stats across the board. It has a pretty decent cooling power which for those who don't know that is pretty much just a stat relating to how quickly the heat build up happens or in layman's terms how long you can fire before needing to reload. With that being said it does take a while to cool down the weapon once it is overheated. As for the range and the damage output, these are on the lower end as is the case with all of these blasters, however it does also have a pretty high rate of fire. At close range it will deal 16 damage to the body and 30 damage to the head and at long range it will deal 10 damage to the body and 19 damage to the head. So overall some pretty low stats but again the rate of fire does make it better than those stats make it out to be. Now if I'm going to be honest I almost never use this blaster as you'll see in a minute that the second blaster is almost identical but just slightly better however in saying that the fact that it is so similar is pretty decent because the second weapon is still a great weapon and so even though I don't personally use it you can still do very well with this blaster. Moving on to the second weapon which is the DC-15 LE and as I said this one is very similar to the first one however it does have a slightly faster rate of fire and it's obviously allowed to attach mods to it as well which is always a big downfall of the base blasters. At close range the DC-15 LE will deal 16 damage to the body and 30 damage to the head and then at long range it will deal 10 damage to the body and 19 to the head so as you can see those stats are actually identical to the base weapon like I said. The thing you need to remember is that the rate of fire is slightly faster and so even with these stats being the same this blaster does just edge out the first one in terms of DPS or damage per second. Now as for attachments or mods as they're called I would recommend going with the reduced recoil mod and that's pretty much it as the improved zoom and 
explosive shot mods really aren't very useful in most cases, however it does of course come down to your own personal preference. This weapon is really well suited for the heavy class when it comes to mid range situations. If you remember to tap the trigger rather than spraying then it can actually do pretty well at a longer range than most of the other heavy weapons, but in saying that it is still best in those close quarter situations. Moving on to the third weapon which is the FWMB 10k and this one has a slightly higher damage output and range at the cost of a slower rate of fire compared to all of the other heavy blasters. At close range this will deal 24 damage to the body and 45 damage to the head and then at long range it deals 15 damage to the body and 28 damage to the head so as you can see those damage stats are a fair bit higher than the others. As for the mods I'd recommend using the auto cooling mod which allows the blaster to cool down much faster on its own and then I'd also recommend using the ion shot mod as well because if you've seen my Mythbusters video on the ion shot you know that the damage drop off is only very slight while allowing you to deal much more damage against vehicles, turrets and shields. This blaster is the most well suited to mid range battles of all the heavy weapons and I'd actually say that it's probably better suited to mid range than it is to close range as the rate of fire is a tiny bit slower. Moving on now to the fourth and final weapon which is the TL50 and personally I think this is the best blaster for the heavy class as it seems to be the most suited to close quarters which really does go well with the playstyle of the heavy class. At close range it'll deal 20 damage to the body and 38 damage to the head and at long range it'll deal 10 damage to the body and 19 damage to the head and with a high rate of fire you can see just how well this does at close range. As for the mods to use, I'd recommend using the improved cooling and reduced spread mods because as good as the secondary fire mode can be, it does mean that you can't ADS and you have to give up one of the other two mods as well, which both drastically improve the weapon overall, although in saying that, it does come down to personal preference. Like I said, this blaster does really suit the heavy class more than any of the other weapons do in my opinion, and so despite the others being still pretty decent weapons, I personally rank the TL50 as the best blaster for the heavy class. So that is all of the blasters and the mods for the heavy class. Class. Again, they are all very unique and suited to their own playstyle, so I can't recommend it enough to give them all a go and figure out which one suits you the best. For me personally, I almost always use the TL50 or I'll switch to the DC15 LA on a bit of a longer range map, but like I said, it is all down to personal preference and the other weapons are still great weapons nonetheless. So now we're going to move on to some of the star cards and like I said, rather than wasting time going through all the star cards, I'm going to give you guys four different combinations or builds which are all suited to some different types of playstyles. So starting off with the tank build and as the name suggests this card combination is going to be suited to a more aggressive type of role that focuses heavily on survivability. This build is mainly for those of you who like going on kill streaks or for those who find themselves unable to survive as all of the cards I'm going to mention will help you stay alive as long as possible. So the first card for this one is the bodyguard star card and this one dramatically reduces the amount of damage you'll take from both explosives and toxins. Fully max this gives you 30% damage reduction from explosives and so this is actually going to make you be able to survive a thermal detonator blast, reducing the damage from 200 all the way down to 134. And so if you are up on the front lines, then this will increase your chance of survival, therefore increasing your chances of extending those kill streaks. Not only that, but it does also allow you to take almost no damage at all from acid launches or dioxys. The second card for this build is the survivalist card, and this one is pretty simple. Essentially what this one does is just decrease the amount of time it takes before your health starts regenerating by up to 40% when fully maxed. So at the end of the day, it will just speed up the healing process. As for the last card, this one is the Improved Combat Shield which drastically improves your regular combat shield, giving it up to 300 health when fully maxed and also allowing for a quicker recharge time. The Combat Shield is awesome for winning one on one fights and so improving it even further is only going to increase the chances of winning as many gunfights as possible. So with these three cards equipped you're going to be able to survive a lot longer than normal and because of that you can step up and play a much faster paced aggressive playstyle than you usually would. This card combination works really well with the TL50, getting up in people's faces and trying to quickly deal damage to your enemies. And with the fallback of your shield plus the explosive damage reduction, you'll find yourself staying alive and going on some very nice kill streaks. Moving on to the second card build, which is the objective build, and this is for those of you who enjoy playing the objective and doing anything you can to help your team get the win. The first card for this one is the resourceful star card, and this one dramatically reduces the cooldown of your abilities, meaning you can use them a lot more often. You might be wondering what this has to do with playing the objective, but your sentry impact grenade and some of the other cards that I'm about to mention can all be pivotal to playing the objective, so having them all available more often means you'll generally do better at pushing the objectives. 
Now, the next card is going to be a choice between two different cards since they actually take up the same slot, and these are the Barrage card and the Ion Turret. I personally go with the Barrage card about 90% of the time when I'm running this setup, but on certain maps, the Ion Turrets are great for the objectives. On maps like Hoth, Crate, and Geonosis, where you have to take down Walkers, then the Ion Turret is a beast, and not only that, but it will rack up a heap of battle points as well. As for the third card, this is again going to be the Bodyguard card that I just mentioned for the previous build, having that explosive and toxin damage reduction can really help when you're in and amongst the objectives. Say you're on a capture point, then there's always going to be plenty of explosives, so I find this one to be really helpful for those kinds of situations. So, like I said, this build is perfect for those who enjoy playing the objective. Using all of those abilities is a nightmare for the enemy team when they're trying to push the objectives or defend it. And the cards relating to survivability work really well with the heavy because the 200 HP on top of those cards makes you very tanky and hard to kill on those objectives. Moving on to the third build, which is the battle point build, and just as it sounds, this this is for those of you who want to try and race for those heroes or vehicles, or for those who want to try and save up thousands of battle points to use towards the end of the game when the match is on the line. The first card is a pretty obvious one, and this is the Bounty Hunter card, which is literally just designed to help you earn battle points at a faster rate. So this one speaks for itself, and there's really not too much to talk about for this one. The second card to use is the Defender Star card, and this one actually gives you battle points for taking damage. Now, that might sound kind of dumb. Obviously, you don't want to take damage whenever possible, but if you're up on the front lines, it's inevitable that you're going to get shot at, so you may as well earn some free battle points for doing literally the opposite of what you want to happen. As for the last card, this is again a choice between the Barrage or the Ion Turret Star cards, as both of these can rack up a whole lot of battle points. Barrage is great for any maps where there are plenty of choke points, and like I said before, any map that's a bit more open is perfect for the Ion Turret, but either way, these will earn you a fair few battle points over the course of a game. Now, moving on to the last build, and this is more just my own personal build that I tend to run most of the time. I do change up very regularly depending on the map and the situation, but this just tends to be the combination that I go with the most. So, the first card is going to be the Expert Weapons Handling card, and this one pretty much just allows your weapon to have less heat build up, meaning you can treat them more like LMGs, which is really how they should be played. The second card is the Survivalist card, which I mentioned earlier and this one just helps a lot for survivor which does help a lot especially with the fact that the heavy class is a little bit slower so having 200 hp plus increased regen time really does seem to help me out a lot as for the third card, I usually run Barrage for this one as, like I mentioned earlier, it's great for those close quarter situations and it does also bring in a lot of battle points. So that's pretty much it for all of the star cards guys. Like I said, there are still plenty of cards that I haven't even touched on as I just don't want the video to drag on, but I do recommend testing out a bunch of other cards as well if you do get a chance as there are some other useful cards to use as well. The other thing is that you can very easily mix and match the combinations that are mentioned, which as you can see, I kind of do that with my own personal build by running almost a mix of the tank and objective build so definitely have a go at mixing and matching some different card combinations as at the end of the day the ones I mentioned are just a starting place for those who aren't too sure. Now lastly we are just going to touch on some general tips before we finish up although most of the tips have already been mentioned so there are only a few more things I want to touch on. The main thing I want to touch on is your map placement and with the heavy class being so well suited to close quarters you should really make it your goal to get up close and personal to your enemies whenever possible. I like to think of the heavy class as probably the best class in the game when it comes to playing the objective and so you should also make it your goal to really push and help get your team into those objectives or to defend them as much as possible if you are on the defending team. With their added health and explosive abilities combined with their close range weapons, heavies can really cause a lot of trouble in and around those objectives and with their ability to take out vehicles with ease, they can really turn the tide of a game if you can learn how to use them effectively. So that is going to do it for this one guys, hopefully these tips can help you guys out and if they did then make sure to leave a like down below to help support the channel. I will of course be going through all the other classes as well, so let me know down in the comments which class you'd like me to do next. If you are new to the channel then feel free to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any more Battlefront 2 videos or live streams. Thank you all so much for watching, you guys have a great day and I will catch you all in the next one.